My dearly beloved in Christ, I would like this morning especially to speak about the epistle, but first a few very brief reflections on the gospel, in which we have the story of two different cures. And it says, chapter 8 of St. Matthew, that our Lord had just come down from the mountain. Well, that was from what is known as giving the Sermon on the Mount. And when our Lord came down from the mountain, the very first thing that happened was he met a leper. And the leper came up to him and said, Lord, if thou wilt, thou canst make me clean. And our Lord said, I will be thou made clean. So we see here on the part of the leper an act of faith, faith in our Lord. And our Lord was very pleased and cured him. The second miracle is when our Lord entered the town of Capernaum, there came to him a centurion. And he also gives us a wonderful example of faith. He said to our Lord, my servant is lying home sick of the palsy, paralysis, and is grievously tormented. And our Lord right away said, I will come and cure him. And the centurion said, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. Only say the word, and my servant will be healed. So the centurion was a pagan. He was a Roman, a Roman soldier. Now a centurion was an officer, much like a captain perhaps, an officer who had under his charge 100 soldiers, called a century of soldiers. And that's why their officer was called a centurion because he had 100 soldiers under him. And he said to our Lord, I say to a soldier, do this, and he does it. And to another, come, and he comes. And so I know that all you have to do is give the word, and my servant will be healed. And what is amazing about this gospel is that our Lord, it says our Lord marveled and said, I have not found such great faith in all of Israel. What an indictment against the Jewish people because they had the faith. They had the prophets of the Old Testament and Moses, the various books of Scripture. And our Lord said, I have not found such faith in all of Israel as compared to this soldier who was a pagan. And what is even more to his credit the centurion, is that we use his words every day in the holy sacrifice of the Mass. The priest holds up the host and says, Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. And then three times we use the words of this centurion, Lord, I am not worthy that thou shouldst come under my roof. But only say the word and my soul shall be healed. So a beautiful prayer, again, from the mouth of a non-Jewish person, a pagan, expressing faith in the power of our Lord. So this is the theme of today's gospel is faith. But I think the epistle for today contains such an important lesson that I especially want to concentrate on the epistle. And the epistle contains the lesson of forgiveness forgiveness of sins, forgiveness of injuries received. St. Paul says in his epistle to the Romans, to no man rendering evil for evil, providing good things not only in the sight of God, but in the sight of all men. Now this reminds us of the words of our Lord from the Sermon on the Mount when our Lord said, you have heard in the Old Testament an eye for an eye a tooth for a tooth. In other words, you've been taught that you can pay back to the same degree of what you have received. But then our Lord taught the gospel, but I say to you to forgive and so forth. And so St. Paul in today's epistle is really just repeating what our Lord had taught. And let me give you some words of our Lord in the Sermon on the Mount. You have heard that it was said, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. 
But I say to you not to resist the evildoer. On the contrary, if someone strike thee on the right cheek, turn to him the other also. And if anyone would go to law with thee and take thy tunic, let him take thy cloak as well. And whoever forces thee to go for one mile, go with him too. To him who asks of thee, give. And from him who would borrow of thee, do not turn away. You have heard that it was said, Thou shalt love thy neighbor and shalt hate thy enemy. But I say to you, love your enemies, do good to those who hate you, and pray for those who persecute and calumniate you, so that you may be the children of your Father in heaven, who makes his Son to rise on the good and the evil, and sends rain on the just, and the unjust. So our Lord says, don't pay back evil for evil, but rather good for evil. And that's a very hard thing to do, obviously, for human nature. We are offended, we are injured, and to return good for evil. But this is the gospel. And our Lord says, if we do that, we will be like his Father in heaven, who sends allows the sun to shine on the good and the bad and sends rain on the just and the unjust. And then St. Paul goes on to expound this in the epistle. He says, If it be possible, as much as, in, as is in you, have peace with all men. Revenge not yourselves, my dearly beloved, but give place unto wrath, for it is written, Revenge is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. Now, we can read this and think, oh, this is wonderful. How do I put it in practice? Well, the way we do that is to read about the saints. How did the saints live? What were the saints like? And let me give you a few examples of some of the saints. This is taken from a book by St. Alphonsus Liguori, and he's talking about the virtue of charity and how saints were so forgiving. He says, if anyone has injured you and you wish to be revenged, Try to act as the saints have done. St. Paulinus tells us that to love one's enemy is a heavenly revenge. St. Catherine of Siena took revenge on a woman who had attacked her honor, and this was her revenge. During a long and severe illness, which that woman suffered, St. Catherine waited on her as a servant. St. Acacius sold his possessions in order to assist a man who had robbed him of his good name. St. Ambrose supported a man who had made an attempt on his life. Venustian, the governor of Umbria, a persecutor of the church, had the hands of St. Sabinus, bishop of Spoleto, cut off, because the saint, instead of adoring an idol, broke it into pieces. Hereupon the governor was seized with such violent pain in his eyes, that he called on the saint to help him. Sabinus prayed for him, and not only cured his body, but also his soul. The governor embraced the true faith. So here you see how the saints acted. Again, returning good for evil, and even praying for those who persecuted them. And this, in this, they thereby gained the merit of what St. James says in his epistle, that he who causes a sinner to be converted will save his own soul and will cover a multitude of sins. And so by practicing charity, we cause others to, you might say, to enter into themselves and to think about how have I acted, how wrong I was, and to repent and to amend. And that's what St. Paul says in the final words of today's epistle. He says, it is written, Revenge is mine, I will repay, saith the Lord. But if thy enemy be hungry, give him to eat. If he is thirsty, give him to drink. For by doing this, thou shalt heap coals of fire upon his head. Now that's an interesting statement. Heaping coals of fire upon someone's head. What does that mean? Well, first of all, St. Paul didn't come up with that statement. It's not original. He's quoting from the book of Proverbs. And I'll read it to you. The book of Proverbs, chapter 25, verse 21. If your enemy be hungry, give him food to eat. 
If he be thirsty, give him to drink. For live coals you will heap on his head, and the Lord will vindicate you. So, St. Paul again is quoting from the book of Proverbs. So, what does this mean? To heap coals of fire on the head of another. It means that it would cause that person in his mind to enter into himself and examine his conscience and as much as to say, I have been unjust. I have been uncharitable. I have been unkind to this person. And look at how he or she is repaying that unkindness by kindness, by charity, and will cause that person to feel ashamed and to be sorry for how he or she acted and to want to change, to imitate your good example of returning good for evil. So again, this is what our Lord taught. This is what St. Paul is teaching in imitation of what our Lord had already taught. And this is how the saints lived. Let me give you a couple other examples. This one is um, St. John Chrysostom, whose feast is today relates the example that St. Melitius, a patriarch of Alexandria, saw the people about to stone the officer who was leading him into exile, and so he embraced the officer, thus saving his life. St. Ambrose says, If strength is wanting, pray to God and he will give it to you. St. Baptist Varani said, If I called a dead person to life, I would be less certain of being loved by God than when I am prepared to do good to him who has done evil to me. Our Lord himself one day said to blessed uh, St. Angela of Foligno, the surest sign of mutual love between me and my servants consists in their loving someone who has offended them. And again, of course, there are many other examples from the lives of the saints. So let us strive to put this epistle into practice. Read it again today. Take out your missile and read the epistle a second time. Make a little examination of conscience on it. How do I act when offended? Do I forgive or do I harbor a grudge and a resentment against that person? Let us get the revenge of the saints, and that is to repay good for evil. And thus we will be truly the children of our Father in heaven and truly deserving the name Christian. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, amen.